an authority on holiness that he once tried to prevent Penn and Teller from performing at the Super Bowl. And now, we happily let him on our TV show. Maybe we're holier than thou, asshole. And I've never seen any single person as revered as Mother Teresa from people all over the world from different civilizations, religions, and demographic groups. I'm Bill Donahue, and I'm the president of the Catholic League for Religious and Civil Rights. Bill likes to point out Mother Teresa's message of peace and love. We should have more people like her as a role model. Unfortunately, we don't. One man's opinion. Here's another. I would describe Mother Teresa as a fraud, a fanatic, and a fundamentalist. I'm Christopher Hitchens, and I'm the author of a book called The Missionary Position, which investigates Mother Teresa. Christopher Hitchens is to the Catholic Church and Mother Teresa what Michael Moore is to a ham sandwich. Relentless, unstoppable, and without fear. We love Hitchens. Everything everybody thinks they know about her is false. Not just most of the things, all the things. It must be the most single successful emotional con job of the 20th century. She was corrupt, nasty, cynical, and cruel. Mother Teresa was known for her home for the dying in Calcutta, India. It sure ain't a hospital. There are no doctors saving lives. This is just a place for victims to suffer and die by the rules of the Catholic Church. You went to Calcutta, you had a 50% chance of running into her, maybe. Much more likely you'd find her with Nancy Reagan or Princess Diana, off in some foreign capital, of beating the bushes and posing for pictures. Or even worse than that, with uh, real crooks and exploiters and robbers of the poor, such as the Duvalier family in Haiti. Wait, not the same Duvalier family that raped and pillaged the Haitian countryside, terrorizing everyone under their iron-fisted rule? Hard to believe. But old Mother Teresa in this 1991 photo op with Baby Doc's wife proclaimed that the Duvaliers love the poor, that the poor love them, and most outrageous of all, quote, it was a beautiful lesson for me. She did press some people who were wealthy to give money so that she could use it in a way to help the poor and to set up the orphanages and the hospices. Oh, she used the dough to help the very people from whom it was taken. Well, no. If there is a big program to ameliorate Haiti run by her order, I've never heard of it. Yep, according to some, she took the undisclosed amount and ran back to India. The Haitians, you know, the ones who worked for the money that had stolen from them by their government, got diddly squat. So how does the Catholic Church defend the spectacle of sleaze? As usual in bullshit, the end always justifies the means. Well, she's not endorsing them. She's simply shaking hands. I mean, quite frankly, if you're going to take money from some people to give to the poor, does it make any sense to take it from the poor? Does it make any sense to take it from the middle class? Wouldn't you take it from the rich? I, I find myself rather astonished. It's simply an excuse, excuse making for theft and, and, and for deceit. It's softness on crime. Mother T also accepted over a million dollars from Charles Keating, whose junk bond debacle caused more than 21,000 old folks to lose their life savings. When she got the money from Charles Keating, he hadn't been indicted about anything. He hadn't even been accused of anything. So what was she supposed to do? The money was already spent by the time that we found out that this guy was a crook. So the Vatican couldn't write a check. There's something assholey in that. No matter what the evidence, fuckers like Bill Donahue see only the good in Mother Teresa. For her work, she's won the Nobel Peace Prize. She's won 124 different international prizes. She's the most revered person amongst the people in India, with the exception of Mahatma Gandhi. We'll get back to Mother Teresa in a moment. That isn't even her real name. That's her real name. What's she hiding? She never had kids, and her name is not Teresa. So what's the deal with all the money, Agnes Gons Gonza Bo uh, uh, Mother Teresa, huh? Agnes Gonja Boyajiu. Yeah. On her world travel, she raised well over 50 million bucks by some account. And yet, where did all of it go? Well, as with most bullshit, follow the money. Mother Teresa's money is mostly spent on religious activities and not on the poor. Dr. Arup Chatterjee, author of Mother Teresa, The Final Verdict. According to this guy, Mother Teresa built over a hundred facilities around the world, all bearing her name and that of her organization, Missionaries of Charity, which is a lot better than the original name, Nuns on the Dole. If you look at the breakdown of her organization throughout the world, you would find that half or slightly more than half 
are actually nunneries and brothers' homes. I don't think that's what people thought they were giving the money for, was the building of religious institutions to hire and train an order of completely obedient, uneducated nuns. I don't know what's creepier, that this was a real agenda, or that stooges like Catholic boy here admit it. Mother Teresa was not interested in having blue chip hospices. She was interested in expanding them. Let's take a tour of her home for the dying in Calcutta. It won't be a happy stroll. This so-called home for the dying, which is her flagship home, is the grimmest place imaginable. Mother Teresa's order does not provide for proper beds in the home. They're little hammocks. There's a communal toilet that people have to defecate in presence of each other. They are not allowed visits from their friends or relatives. Very strange. They have to lie in the bed or sit in the bed consistently. She had the fucking coin and she pissed it away on nunneries? Okay, this is really pissing us off. Come on, let's check out her books and, you know, see exactly how all of her money is spent. Uh, Missionaries of Charity is the only Indian charitable organization which do not uh, publish its accounts for the public to obtain them. Uh, much of our foreign money is kept in the Vatican Bank. <laughs> Fucking cunt! But these bullshit living conditions, that's not very Christ-like, or is it? We see Christ in the broken body, and we touch him, and that touch is, comes from the deep faith that Christ cannot deceive. It, it was her obsession with suffering, and and her obsession that people need to suffer in, in order to come close to Jesus. Obsession with suffering? What we need is an insider who can verify that. You know, like a former nun or something. I'm Kelly Dunham. I'm an ex-nun on the run and a stand-up comic, and I'm hanging out here in front of this Catholic church. Seek and ye shall find. So, um, like most of you, I'm sure, I uh, used to be a nun. I'm an ex-nun. Uh, Kelly's a stand-up comic in Philadelphia. But at one time, she was called Sister Mercy and worked side by side with Mother Teresa in a convent in New York. What she saw surprised her. The biggest thing that I think that Mother Teresa should maybe be held accountable for is this cult of suffering that she's created. She definitely has a kind of harsh side. At the convent, Kelly was moved by the pain and misery of the residents, but angered by how she was instructed to deal with it. She was told to be like Mother Teresa. It was required for you to kind of subvert every human emotion. If one of the goals of the Missionaries of Charity is to really love people, um, you've essentially cut yourself off from loving people. That was a life Kelly didn't want. Hopefully this will cover my soul for talking shit about Mother Teresa. So she quit the church. I could never get them lit when I was a nun either. They're in the business of alleviating suffering, but I, th I think that they believe a lot in suffering, and it's hard to do both at the same time. So what was it with Mother Teresa's suffering kink? Is that how she got off? Mother Teresa wanted people to live in impoverished conditions so she could identify with the poor whom she's serving. Whoa, let's play that back. Did he just say what I think he said? Oh, absolutely. Mother Teresa wanted people to live in impoverished conditions so she could identify with the poor whom she's serving. They had to suffer so Mother fucking Teresa could be enlightened? Oh, what a saint. She must, have, she must have been so enlightened she glowed in the dark. She wasn't in the least bit interested in alleviating poverty. We asked Christopher Hitchens about it, and after a few more cigarettes and glasses of scotch, he summed it up for us. Can we, do the, can we finish this first? Okay. I would say it was a certainty that millions of people uh, died because of her work and millions more were made poorer, stupider, more sick, more diseased, more fearful, and more ignorant. There's ignorant, and then there's you, Mother Teresa. God bless you. God bless you. In spite of Mother Teresa's glowing reputation, the Catholic Church is in trouble. Priests raping boys will do that. There's panic in the Vatican, and something has to be done. One way of keeping the faithful together is the old-time religion, is the good old-fashioned stuff. Let's find a real saint, one who even the non-Catholics love. Vatican rules say that Mother Teresa hasn't been dead long enough to be a saint. But the Pope said a few magic words and presto changeo, the problem is gone. But Pope land rules require Mother Teresa must have performed two, count them, two miracles after her death. 
the Pope changed that requirement to one. And then, hallelujah! In a village outside of Calcutta, the church found a woman willing to claim that a tchotchke with Mother Teresa's face on it had cured her stomach tumor. Now, the woman's own husband said, this miracle is a hoax. My wife was cured by doctors. But who listens to him? No, miracles do not occur. Okay, um, dead people do not cure living people of disease. It doesn't happen. It's a scandal. Okay. There's no tooth fairy either. Though, I mean, there's no Santa Claus. I have to keep on breaking this stuff to people, and every time they say, well, are you sure? And I say, yes, yes, absolutely I am. Back of the mystery. Together, they complete each other. Faith is the surrender of the mind. It's the surrender of reason. It's the surrender of the only thing that makes us different from other mammals. It's our need to believe and to surrender our skepticism and our reason. Our yearning to discard that and put all our trust or faith in someone or something that is the sinister thing to me. Of all the virtues, of all the supposed virtues, faith must be the most overrated.